This is the serratus anterior muscle, a really fascinating muscle. It is part of the shoulder and there are actually three parts to it. You can see that conceptually the origin of the muscle is running along the inner border of the front of the scapula and then the muscle breaks up into fingers which run outwards, they run around from the scapula, they run laterally and then forward and attach to the ribs. So you've got these fingers starting from the second rib, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth ribs coming to what's called the anterior axillary line which is the line at the front of the axilla and they form an arch like this. There are three separate um, origins which you can't quite see here. The top little branch runs and it attaches right to the top little edge of the scapula just here. It's a relatively weak part of the muscle. The next two have quite a broad attachment all along the medial border of the scapula and the last four or five all attach into the bottom corner of the scapula here behind in, in, in front of the scapula behind the, the bone that we can see here. They're the most strong muscles. So if the serratus anterior contracts it will, because these muscles are so strong, it will rotate the scapula around and therefore help with lifting your arm up. It will rotate the, the glenoid fossa upwards. If they all contract together, it will also pull the scapula out sideways, which is called protraction. So it will pull your scapula forward and around and help you if you were going to reach for something. If your arm was reaching forward, the, the serratus would pull the shoulder blade forward and, and laterally. But it also has an, another incredibly important task and that is that it is one of the major stabilizers of the scapula itself. So, as you remember, the scapula is the base of the whole arm. The arm is this big long lever and if you're carrying a weight at the end of the lever, there will be huge rotational forces on the scapula and this, which is a very big muscle, will contract to help stabilize and stop the scapula, this edge of the scapula, from winging out. So uh, if this muscle is weak, if the serratus muscle is weak, or if the nerve to the serratus muscle is damaged, and this is a very unusual nerve called the long thoracic nerve, it has a very long path and sometimes it may become damaged, then if you were to lean up against the wall, push in, this edge of the scapula wings out and it becomes obviously it just flaps out from the chest wall. So these are the movements that the serratus anterior muscle does, a stabilizing movement and a power movement to help with lifting the arm up and lifting and pulling the arm forward, stretching forward. Trigger points quite often arise in the serratus muscle the primary place that you feel them is over the chest wall in your armpit and coming forward over the chest wall. It may refer in a band down the inside of the arm and may affect your fifth finger. There is a second pattern which occurs as we see just over, over the, in the, in the uh, chest wall and the axilla but there's a second much smaller pattern which occurs around the inferomedial, the lower inner border of the scapula over the chest wall. There is another important symptom which occurs when the serratus anterior 
muscle has trigger points in it, and that is air hunger. The serratus anterior is a very powerful muscle, and when trigger points are activated, what happens is the muscle itself gets tight bands, and therefore is not able, it becomes uh, contracted relatively. Now, you can see that the fingers of the serratus attach to the ribs, and if they are contracted, they will reduce normal movement of the ribs. With no less normal movement, you will have the feeling of restriction from breathing, and a feeling which is uh, real, because the, the, the ribs aren't able to move in their normal excursion, and is also in, in a way sensed because you have a feeling of a tight band around your chest from the serratus muscles themselves. Once this, these triggers are released, the feeling of air hunger goes. This can be a really um, upsetting symptom and all the way through to, be, to being uh, really intensely um, concerning for people. Air hunger is part of dysfunctional breathing. As um, we know, the prim primary muscle of respiration is the huge diaphragm which occurs in this area of the body and which um, acts to divide the body in half. It's like a big dome. It's designed as it contracts to push down and as it pushes down, the chest increases in volume hugely, so you can breathe very, very efficiently with very little use of energy. When breathing is dysfunctional, and the use, you, what happens is you move into what's called the stress mode of breathing, then you use a whole series of accessory muscles of respiration. The little muscles between the ribs, the muscles up above the neck, the scalenes. Um, and part of this is that the serratus may in fact become activated. All of these move the chest wall um, not a lot and are very inefficient in shifting air and use up a lot of energy. So as part of checking out air hunger and, this, and the fact that breathing is dysfunctional, you should always feel across to the serratus muscles and look for the trigger that appears in the mid serratus muscles, inactivate that, and you will help with normal excursion of ribs.